So towards the end of the conversation, I was like, no, that's my ear. You're, oh, oh, hey, welcome you back to the that later. Oh, yeah, we could. Welcome to, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Rough to a great start. All right, take two. Welcome back to the John Sawyer Show, the drunkenly critically acclaimed, soon to be award winning John Sawyer Show, live right here on Strawn Island TV. If you are joining us on Facebook Live, we thank you. If you are listening to us on the TuneIn Radio app, we thank you. If you don't have the TuneIn Radio app but wish to get it, you can do so by going to the App Store and or Google Play, depending on which service your phone carries. Download the app for free, search Strong Island Radio in the search engine, and as long as you have us marked down as one of your favorites, you can listen to us on the go every single week. I am John Sawyer, along with... For the last time on Strong Island Television and Radio, Mr. Evil Joe, Joe Herb. How are you feeling today, man? Uh, it's getting somber, tired. It's a somber moment. Yeah, it, it is a somber moment. It's, it's you know, Ed, the fact that like I just said I'm, I'm, I'm tired because I've been, it's been nonstop packing all week. Like, I had most of it done already, mm -hmm. but it's like all this little random stuff. Like, I'll pack one thing and then be like, wait, I forgot these other five things. So you always, like, forget one thing at the last minute, and you have to keep just, going back? Oh, yeah. When, when I, like, if I travel, if I go on, a, like, a vacation for a week or something, mm -hmm. I always have to, like, ask someone, am I forgetting something? Mm -hmm. And there's always, like, two, three things I'm forgetting, like a toothbrush, razor, right? something. So, yeah, it's been a lot of that. Right, so well. tomorrow's my last day to pack, so hopefully I'll have everything packed. And when do you head out? Tuesday. Uh, no, uh, Wednesday. Right. Tuesday I pack up the truck. All right. Well, let's hope this one doesn't suck like some others have. I hope not. <laughs> Phone lines are open tonight. You can call us by simply dialing 516-945-9099. Again, the number is 516-945-9099. We are also on Skype. If you wish the video to call in and have your pretty face shown on the broadcast along with these two pretty faces... And that one over there, which we will get to in a minute. You can do so by going to the Skype app and Skype in strongisland.com or by Skype in the call -in number, which is once again 516-945-9099. Making his triumphant return after, I don't know, a few weeks or so to the John Sawyer Show. Coming off of his match with Mike Orlando this past Friday at Bree Combination Wrestling. People are calling it his best work yet. Hell Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, the beard villain, Mr. Johnny Malloy. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. No. It's great to be back right. at the John Sawyer Show. Good. And uh, on your final goodbye, man. So we're going to try to make this good. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, because you're basically dead after this. Right, right. Yeah, that's oh, it. Yeah, yeah well, we're going to bring it to that spot where it looked like someone may have been murdered outside the studio. Yeah, right next door. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, a little alleyway. And next to Malloy, we have the quite shy Binky. <coughs> Hi. Using I'm here. the camera phone. Doing the, with the, the live feed, the live stream onto Facebook. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we're yeah. multi-platform here. Mm. So last time we had you here... Um, there was a question I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. just like I ask every other wrestler we've had in the studio, and that is, if you can change... Oh, let the advertisement go real quick. Oh, by the way, I uh, forgot to mention, he is currently the uh, Rampage Pro Open Challenge champion. You damn right I am. Yeah, but that, will, but that will be changing for something quite bigger, which we will get to in a second. Okay. But first... As I was going to mention, uh, <clears throat> as I was going to mention, not to mention, whatever. Cemention. Botch. Um, <laughs> Look for that in Botchamania this week. Y'all, no, yeah, bullshit. <laughs> 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 um, if you could change anything in the professional wrestling business, what would it be? Oh, my God. You know, you kind of gave me a heads up that you were going to ask that question. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, like, thought of it. And there's just... So many answers. Oh, my God. Um, you know what? Since it's a magic question and I can do anything I want, Be here's what I'm going to do. Want. I'm going to send out some kind of electromagnetic pulse across the globe that wipes the internet out. Mm -hmm. So now if you want to see a wrestling show, you have to come to that wrestling show. Mm -hmm. If you want to watch it, you have to buy that DVD. I think I would change that. I would make it so DVDs matter again. 
mm-hmm. live events matter again. Um, I don't know if you guys follow uh, Tier One Wrestling. We've heard of it, but no. They ha- they had a really really uh, like star studded show. I think it was uh, Pentagon Junior or Pentagon Ohm or whatever he's called now. Zero M or whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they keep suing him. Um, <laughs> but it was him versus. Uh, oh my God! I want to get it right, but I think it's Matt Riddle, who's like the most important. Uh, like indie darling guy right now, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and they did like twenty seven people, mm-hmm. like twenty seven people in the middle of Queens or Brooklyn or whatever, um, because people thought, what's the point of going? I'm gonna get it on YouTube the next day, right? So I would do that. Let's wipe the internet out. Let's just make it so you have to go. Mm. I and mean, it, it, would, it would improve a lot of things too. It would get rid yeah. of all the information that gets out, all the leaks and everything too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh. I would sell a hell of a lot more 8x10s. Yeah. <laughs> Buy my 8x10s. Yeah, I think uh, John Sawyer Show uh, is uh, credited for giving you one of your many phrases now. That's true, <laughs> Buy man. my 8x10. I'm a hashtag king right now. Yeah, Drink it in, John. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gift of Moy. So you just came off of your uh, match with Mike Orlando this past Friday. Tell us about it. Oh, man. It was uh, Brie Combination Wrestling. Mm-hmm. A champion will rise. So we had Mike Orlando, who was the uh, favorite in the tournament. He had he had defeated uh, Billy Gunn. He had wrestled Shelton Benjamin. He had won the Monsters Ball. He had fought Tony Nese. He had did everything big for this company. Mm-hmm. So he was the number one seed, the favorite to win the tournament. And, of course, in the first round, he fought the Beard Villain, who's had one match for this company and lost. So I, I, you know, I got to be the dark horse, the right. the sixteenth seed. So it was very interesting. So what I did was I made the match super dirty, and I cheated as much as humanly possible. <laughs> uh, you know, I tricked him. I jumped him from behind. I'm on him. I'm on him. I'm making it dirty, and I'm making it gritty. Mm. And apparently, even in a loss, apparently my stock went through the roof. Is what I'm hearing after this match, and it was a slobber knocker. I mean, I can't say it like JR. I mean, most of my face works. But uh, it was good. It was supposed to be good. And, you know, Orlando, he beat the crap out of me. I'm pretty sure his jaw is as sore as mine is. So I know I beat the crap out of him. And people were happy, man. Now, and I, now I'll admit I haven't seen the match. I probably will. It, you, you got, know, you got to see it. I'm, within, I'm, I'm pretty proud well, of it. Within a couple of months or so. Yeah. But, um... Couple months. As, well, how what? how busy are you here on the John Sawyer show? Well, how long does it take to get it up on YouTube or something? Dude, it'll be up like tomorrow. Larry Legend recorded it. It'll be up like tomorrow. Okay, then tomorrow it is. Tomorrow it is. All right, but tomorrow uh, it as is. much of a slob this match is, you still got to give credit to Mr. Mike Orlando, probably one of the premier guys on the New York Independence right now. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Um, that's why I was excited about wrestling him. I was supposed to wrestle him in Delaware three weeks ago. And uh, he double booked himself. Uh, traffic was nuts. He couldn't make it. Uh-huh. So we got to do it in Queens. And you know what? At the end of the match, even though I gouged his eyes and I choked him and I beat him and I, I did everything I could to beat him, I still got in the ring and I gave him my respect because he had earned it. So on the John Sawyer show, we're going to do this right. Mike Orlando, you beat me on your turf. I'm inviting you to Dover, Delaware, where I'm over in Dover, and we're going to do this on my turf. You just got to give me until after June 24th so I can win that Rampage Heavyweight Championship, and then I will defend it in Dover, and I will kick your ass, Green Machine. You're better off tweeting him. There's no way he watches Mike this Orlando. <laughs> Mike Orlando watches everything, man. <laughs> He'll find it somehow. Mike yeah, Orlando still will. watches Impact Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> With the dozens in attendance. God, even, right? I stopped. even I stopped watching that. But you know what? There's so many New York guys over there right now. Oh, I know. Oh, Falaba, yeah. Mario Bocara. Yeah. Kevin yeah. Matthews. Kevin Matthews yeah. finally yeah. getting something big, which is awesome because Matthews yeah. is good. And then LAX. You know, my favorite stable back in the day. Mm-hmm. And now we got Angel Ortiz and Mike Drastics. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I wish I knew their real names, like what they call themselves now, but... It's awesome, dude. Right. So, did you did you notice that KM was at NYWC? All right, not, uh, yeah, no, uh, House of, House of Harcourt. House of Harcourt. Yeah, yeah, I saw him there. He was like yeah. walking around. Who? I came at uh, Kevin, KM, Matthews. Kevin Matthews. Who? No, I'm kidding. I knew. Yeah, <laughs> I just put him over like two seconds ago. Right. Uh, yeah. So recently, 
uh, word broke out that you apparently closed the SWA school. Yeah, I did. What go- what's going on there? Um, what ended up happening was, listen, you have NYWC, premier school for the last 50 million years. Mm-hmm. Um, if Jesus needed to learn to wrestle, he would have went to NYWC. They've been around forever, and they do a good job. They got Bull James over there. They got Stockade over there. They're doing a great job. Stockade's still there? Oh, Stockade can't leave. He uh, got wedged in the doors. There no. was something. <laughs> I, well, I, I, I asked because I heard he was leaving for a while. I hope. I got. I hope not because uh, he's not, not leaving the business, but leaving there to go like do other you know promotions or something like that. I could be wrong, but um, you know what? Maybe it's one of those things where he's going to leave for a little bit because he's done everything. Right. Like everything. If you look at their Hall of Fame, he's pretty much killed everybody in the Hall of Fame. Right. So he's done it all. But uh, I don't know. I haven't heard. I know he was fishing yesterday. Um, well, I don't know about the man's personal life, but I'm just... I'm oh, yeah, just he was saying. fishing. He fell over the... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, there was NYWC. They're so good at what they do, and House of Glory is taken off. Right. You can't deny it. Uh, Johnny Rods is doing his thing, um, and then FTW. Oh, my God. They have, like, four schools, and they have Gallo, Kono, Reefer, all training. So, you know, why are we, why are we fighting over peanuts? Why are we fighting over the, the four kids who are left who want to train? Mm-hmm. So I said, listen, I'm out of state every week, almost every week. Uh, th- this week is the first week I have off. Why am I going to wrestle a show nine hours away on a Saturday night, then have to drive back to open up my school at 9 a.m., come in there tired, come in there beat up. The kids aren't getting what they should because I'm tired. Let me, let me close it up. Mm-hmm. Who I got left, listen, you guys got Hog, you got NYWC, go to one of them. Try out FTW if you want. Do what you got to do. So, so right you, were now, doing, you were doing a service to the students and yeah, well, not giving them, you know, what you would think was a, an unfair, you know, uh, experience, so to say? I guess so. I mean, we did it three years. Um, I had uh, Pancakes come in and train for a while with us. Mm-hmm. I had Mike Magnum. When he was doing his WWE stuff, he was there. Speaking of, speaking of Pancakes, I'm so sorry to cut you off. Oh, my God. He's going to call right no, now. No, no, no. <laughs> Right around the time of the whole uh, page uh, incident with the sex tape going viral, okay. Um, I think please don't do- tell me Pancakes has a sex tape. Oh no, 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 no! It's just him bucking a waffle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, no one wants you to did, see uh, that. <laughs> um, there was a live video from the SWA Train Academy, and I was watching, you know, um, after it aired. Uh, okay. That's what I saw. Just to see what happened. And I'm reading the comments, and I guess this kid James McGrady was out there bumping and Pancakes. I have it on my phone here, actually. I took a screenshot because I yeah. laughed so hard. He writes, uh, James McGrady took time from masturbating over Paige's sex tape over and over again to come down to the <laughs> SWA Training Academy. Everyone, please show support to James McGrady for his sacrifice. <laughs> uh, Hashtag McGrady. sticky fingers. Hashtag don't touch me. <laughs> uh, you know what the weird thing is? He was there. Like He was just standing in the darkness that day just tweeting these things. Oh, really? Yeah, he was standing there. He just didn't want to be on camera. <laughs> uh, Fucking, fucking comedian Do over there. Do you see the school yeah. opening back up again sometime down the road? Well, uh, Friday night in Queens, uh, after the match, I'm sitting and I'm talking to Grim Reefer. And he's running FTW's Academy. And he's got about 30 kids out there mm-hmm. right now. And he was asking me the same question. Are you going to bring it back? Are you going to do it again? And I said to him, uh, ah, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. And he goes, that's good. You're young. You do the wrestling. Later on in life, you do the other shit. I said, you know what? Johnny Malloy, Grim Reefer. So if Grim Reefer is on board with what I'm doing right now, I must be doing the right thing. Yeah, there you go. So foreseeable future, uh, at least until I get another trainer in there, like a second guy, mm. because I was using, uh, I was having cash for a while, right. and I trained cash 10 years ago, um, but cash got injured. Not at, all, uh, not at anything we were doing. He just got hurt in general, and he can't wrestle for a while. What happened? Um, I, I, he was fooling around or something. And he took, like, a bump or something, and he just bumped wrong. And um, I don't want to say officially, but he broke his neck in some way, and he has to get surgery. Oh, wow. He's been out for about four months now. Mm. So that's what became really hard because days I couldn't make it, he was there. A broken neck, you can't – what are you going to be like? Oh, this is a bump. I'm going to describe it to you. I can't show you because I'm in a neck brace, but I'm going to describe it to you. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, that was another deciding factor. But um, maybe one day, you know, when things slow down for me now – and uh, I got somebody else who knows what they're doing to get in there. Maybe we'll do it again. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, what about shows in the SWA? Anything coming up? Pretty much the same boat. Listen, uh, 
we ran two shows last year at the end of the year, Len Oddity's Farewell Show mm. and The Rise Show. Both good shows. Uh, big attendance for us. We went from like 40 people when we took the hiatus to 150 when we came back. So I was happy. We made money, but that was it. It was good. I didn't have a drive to do another show, and I thought when my students need matches, that's when the show will come. Mm. So they were tied together. Okay. So it's one of those things. When the school opens up, I'm sure the SWA will open up again. The, right. like, the, the working, everything, we're still great with NYWC. You know, if I wanted to run a show tomorrow, we could do it. It's just there's no drive to do it right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. One last SWA question, and then we'll All move right. on. Um, what's the biggest crowd you guys ever drew? Okay. Because um, you said you went from 40 to 150 uh, pre-hiatus and post-hiatus. Yeah. Um, what was a good night for you guys? Well, it, it depends on what year. In the first year, if we got under 200, we were pissed. We were mad. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember the first show we ran, Steps to a Pinnacle, was 351. Okay. The second show we ran, Pick Your Poison, featuring Colt Cabana, was 91. Oh, wow. Now, we were killing ourselves. We, 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 thought, we really thought we did something wrong on the first show. Why did nobody show up? It turns out it was like a really horrible weekend for wrestling. House of Hardcore got killed that night. They did like 100 people that night. Everybody got murdered. Mm -hmm. Came back with the third show. Again, we were back over 200. Mm -hmm. So it rebounded. Um, first year, 200 average. Second year, 150 average. Third year, it was rocking around 100. And then towards the end, it started getting low. When I started using more local younger guys, it started getting low. Mm -hmm. Biggest crowd for us was War Games. It was 455. War Games 2013? Uh, the one where the cage fell on everybody. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, where that, where that person almost died in the crowd. That was our biggest show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the Tommy Dreamer one, where we had Tommy Dreamer, Robbie E., and the FBI, was decent. It was like two-something plus in the time where the crowds were really low. But okay. you got to remember, first year, it was us and NYWC running that building, and occasionally FTW. Mm -hmm. By the third year, it was us NYWC, Evolve, World's Finest, uh, Next Level Wrestling, Fiesta Pro, um, all these little smaller upstart companies. And so you're running, you went from running two shows a month in that building to running seven or eight. Mm -hmm. So then the crowd shrunk and everyone's like, why did the crowd shrink? Well, it's the same 300 people. We're just right. splitting them. Right. Yeah. So great building though. Yeah. Fantastic, and a lot of history in there too. Oh, yeah. in regards to pro wrestling, the uh, new North, the new ECW arena, is yeah, the auditorium, yeah. yeah, with a piece from the old ECW, yeah. the entrance set and all there, and uh, some blood on the canvas. <laughs> <laughs> always fresh blood, every oh week. yeah, always. Oh, I remember man. being there for a training class um, the night after uh, Stockade and Matt Tremont headlined uh, World's Finest Wrestling. They did like a death match. Yeah, I remember. And the entire canvas was completely soaked. Mm -hmm. It looked like somebody died in that ring. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> come the training class, I was in. All right, everybody get in and start doing rolls. I'm like, on this? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know how, like, uh, the AIDS epidemic, HIV epidemic, traces back to what they call, like, patient zero or something like mm -hmm. that? Right. You know, I feel like, man, imagine if some of these deathmatch wrestlers had something wrong. Like, we're going to be like... What was your legacy in wrestling? Well, Stockade had AIDS. He didn't know for five years and infected <laughs> half of the East Coast. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they're good. June twenty. We're <laughs> <laughs> sure. Just, just keep telling yourself everything's fine. I'm gonna get a nasty fine. message. Did you tell people I have AIDS? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. June twenty fourth at uh, Rampage Pro Wrestling in Delaware. You have a world title match against the current champion Muddy Waters. But there's a little bit of a catch there. What's going on? That's true. Hold on. All right. So here is the catch. Because I have just utterly dominated the state of Delaware for the last nine months, and I've taken the Rampage Open Challenge Championship, and I've taken it, and I've turned it from the U.S. title to the world title. Now the owner wants to uh, kill my steam the only way he knows how. Malloy, you can have a shot at the world belt if you give up your open challenge belt. It was a tough, tough decision because this belt, it means a lot more to me than any other belt because I've built this thing. I was the first champion, 
and I've built it for the last nine months, and I've taken it everywhere, and I made it so it was comparable to the world title there. And now they want me to give it up for an opportunity at the world championship. And I'm going to do it. All right. Because I don't want to be second fiddle to anybody. All right. All right. Yeah. So June 24th, uh, where can fans get tickets to see that? In the Delaware, Dover, Delaware. Yeah, Delaware Agricultural Museum, Rampage Pro Wrestling on Facebook. And uh, you got a second? Sure. All right, Muddy, I know you got nothing else to do. You and your broke brother are sitting at home on your couch watching this, dreaming you were the beard villain. Well, on June 24th, you ain't got to sit back and watch, Muddy. I'm bringing the fight to you. Last show, I took you... The New Age Dracula and your brother, and I put all three of you through a table, and I made the world and Delaware know who is the king. Well, on June 24th, there's nothing fancy about it, Muddy. I'm going to come in there, and I'm going to put you down. I'm going to put you down, I'm going to hurt you, and I'm going to embarrass you in front of your friends and family. And then I'm going to take your title, and I'm going to hold it up proud, because the king of Delaware will finally, officially, in the record books, be the absolute top dog. Fear the beard, Muddy Waters. You heard it first right here on the John Sawyer Show. The beard villain has spoken. If you are just tuning in, this is the John Sawyer Show live on Strong Island TV and on the TuneIn Radio app. We come to you live every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time only on Strong Island TV. We got my buddy Evil Joe Herb here live in studio for the very last time. I'm so sorry. And we got the beard villain Johnny Malloy coming back uh, to pay us a nice visit. Along with uh, his shy little friend there, Pinky. Which brings me on to the next subject. June 3rd at BWF in the Bronx. Yes. We got Malloy in action and we got Yun Binky in action. Yes, I will be there. Tell Definitely. us about yourself. Um, I am tiny. but How, I'm how tiny? Under five feet. Okay. So I'm pretty tiny. Okay. Um, but I like, like the dwarf among midgets? <laughs> He always says I'm like the biggest midget. I'm like the tallest midget. The world's best. tallest midget. Do yes. you rub in the fact that you can reach the cereal boxes and they can't? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> if I see anybody shorter than me, I'm like, ha. I'm like, ha. Well, okay, getting but, heat uh, early. Okay. <laughs> but um, I hit really hard. Okay. Um, you know, I am a monster in the ring. I'm not afraid to <laughs> get in there with anybody, with guys, girls, anybody that they put in front of me. I've been in battle royals, uh, you know, tag matches, triple threats, anything. Now how long have you been working? Uh, I think my first match was November of last year, November 2016. Don't ask me. I've been wrestling a long time. You <laughs> There's nothing left up here, man. Yeah, it was, it was uh, I think it was November 2016. So not a year, not a full year of matches, but, uh, but I've been training for about two years before that. But let me point out something for the world. It is quality over quantity. Her right. first match was better than what a lot of people can put together in 10 years. So it, it definitely, you'd rather wrestle um, quality matches in front of uh, big names and people who can put you further mm -hmm. than, wa than wrestle, uh, you know, shit matches right. for the rest of your life. So, yeah. And the smaller the attendance, the harder you work. You know, so that hopefully next time around, bigger the crowd, you know? Yeah. So June 3rd at the Bronx for BWF, who do you got? Um, I don't know yet. I don't know who my opponent is. Uh, last time I was at BWF, I didn't make it to their show this month, but the month before, I did a tag match uh, with the Beard Villain. Me and him tagged against uh, Lexa Rose and Trigger, and we killed them. He's got a creepy mustache. Yeah, well, you know. Well, it doesn't matter about his mustache because I picked him up and I dropped him on his head. Oh, okay. Yeah. And now the mustache makes sense because he thinks he's a cowboy. Does he really? He thinks he's a cowboy. <laughs> I, I yeah. dropped him so hard on his head. He thinks he's a cowboy and his bitch thinks she's an Indian. Oh, my God. <laughs> the trauma from seeing her man get crushed. Uh, I, may, I got the pin on Lexa. Um, she's beaten me at BWF before. Mm -hmm. So maybe it'll be her. I don't really know, but I know I'll be there. So and ready to go, whoever they put in front of me. Yeah, well, best of luck to you, June third in the Bronx. Thank you. And uh, no, microphones aren't exactly your thing, so uh, you can. It's a little weird. 
If you want, you can take the. I know, big black thing in your hand. It's going to look strange to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> We are TVMF. From, from the, from the guy who has the mushroom head by his lips for the whole show. <laughs> Once a week, every week. <laughs> All right. You can uh, take the phone back now. Yeah, um, once again, phone lines are open. You can call us at 516-945-9099. Or you can Skype us at strawnisland.com or by Skyping. Or you can Skype the call-in number, which is 516 945 Nine zero nine nine. Joe, what's going on in your world? Uh, the usual crap. The usual crap. <laughs> Always the usual crap. Nothing on the news or nothing. There, re- there really hasn't been much going on this week. It's been a boring week for wrestling. Yeah. I mean, the, the the big thing, of course, you can't hinder gender. Yeah, you can't. Nah. Everybody's saying he's you know gassed up now, and everybody's saying that he's a. Uh, you know, my response is, you know, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hell yeah. None of them were there when he got tested. None of them were there when he, you know, uh, say he did do it. None of them were there, you know. So w- why is it their business in the first place? Who cares if he guessed, you know, as long as he's finding some success, you know. And and, and, if, and even if he did, it's not like he's the first pro wrestler to actually die. No, he is. He's the first. He, he he's the first from no, that country, maybe. No one in wrestling what, has ever used steroids. No, <laughs> Are you shooting right now. <laughs> what? Ginger's from Canada. No, he's from a Seven Eleven stand or whatever. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know Calgary was was you know part of India. Well, they got some camels up there. What? Well, I'm thinking of the weird looking horses. <laughs> I With still have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're talking about moose. Moose? Probably. Mooses? Is that, is that no, correct? No, there's no mooses. Mooses? You know, I hear in Halifax, they do moose stuff for money. Moose <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do moose stuff. I remember that. Uh, but have you ever seen a moose up close? Yes. Terrifying creatures. Oh, yeah. yeah. Terrifying. Gigantic. Yes. Yeah. Bigger than my head. But That's something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so since Joe's got nothing, why don't we get to this little thing here that the Iggy and Sean show left behind? Oh, so we're stealing from other shows now? Oh yeah. Woman maces three Wendy's workers during dispute over fresh French fries. Uh Iram Channel Emir Dixon, what kind of name is that? Pulled her vehicle. I mean, before up you, before you get too far into this, Wendy's doesn't deserve that kind of thing. Burger King, I could see macing the workers for for on fresh fries. No, McDonald's deserves that. Yeah, you, want, you guys want to hear something weird? Okay. All right. <laughs> I, I try to, else. There's been a lot of weird things said already I, tonight. I try to avoid uh, avoid Wendy's because Wendy's in New York is the most depressing place in the world. Mm-hmm. You'll only see old people, people on the verge of death, people with severe disabilities. That's who eats. So are you saying Wendy's in, is like Florida? Yes, Wendy's in New York is Florida. No. But. If you go to any other state, Wendy's is like Disneyland. It's the happiest place yeah, on yeah. earth. What the hell? Mm-hmm. It's the same thing with Walmart. You know, you go to Walmart in the Northeast or anywhere on the East Coast, yeah. it's completely trash, you know, like nothing but some of the most horrible people you've ever seen. You go down in the South, they treat it like holes. You know, polite, respectful yeah. employees yeah. with, you know, decent that's, that's stuff. That's a good point. You know. uh, that's a weird point. Yeah. You know, you just lost some sponsors, but... Like we had any in yeah. the first place. <laughs> the John Sawyer Show, sponsored by Target. Fuck <laughs> Walmart. Target. We have a caller. Oh. Pancakes, all right. I know who it is, too. John Sawyer Show, who's this? Casey. Casey who? <laughs> that was Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, right Evil Joe's Squeeze is on the line. Yes, she is. Yeah, the woman he'll be running to comes you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's going on, Casey? Nothing. I was just wondering how come you said that there's nothing exciting and new going on in your life this week, Joe. Well, because everyone knows that I'm moving in a couple of days. <laughs> so aside from that, there really isn't. Okay. You always have a good answer for it, and don't you? Hmm? Yeah, what was that? I said you always have a good answer for everything, don't you? Yes, I do. She's putting you on the spot. She really is. <laughs> she, is al- the, she always does. Is this all the time? Yes. Okay. This is what women do. Uh, yes. Apparently. No. Casey, do you still want to stab him? Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> See? More every day. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's like this T-shirt I found at a shopping mall. It said, one day I'll find a special little lady that will stab me to death. I should have bought that for him. <laughs> you really should have. Yeah. <laughs> you really should have. So, Casey, where are you calling from in uh, Missouri? Springfield. Springfield. Okay, with the yellow people. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to include? Uh, Not really. No, we just checking. we just happened to have come across this weird thing about a Wendy's worker getting maced over uh, French fries. Uh -huh. Have you ever dealt with anything like this? Um, no, not really. <laughs> All right. Are you good customer service? Oh, you used to work customers. Oh, so you, I'm sure you've dealt with uh, the scum of the earth, haven't you? Yes, but you have to put a smile on your face. <laughs> do, you ever, yeah. do you have any customer service stories you want to share? Anything funny no. or no? No, pretty boring. Well, thanks for calling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Oh, that was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be so, better if you had an eject button and they just get shot up into space. Eject of Cito, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. so that's, um, that's my girl. Yeah, nice to meet her. So what were you saying before the phone rang? Oh, I don't know. You don't know either? I don't know. Uh, Walmart. Uh, all right, here. All right. You had a Bobby Dream space out moment right there? Oh, my God. Don't even don't even mention he who shall not be named. You know, <laughs> Voldemort and Bobby Dream look alike. <laughs> they do. Same barber. <laughs> <laughs> Same barber. Go figure. Uh, no, you know what? All right. So how much time we got to kill right now? We have like 25 minutes. Oh, my God. You guys are horrible. <sighs> this is why this is the season finale. Oh, wait. Never mind. This isn't. See, not season finale. Just his finale. Nah, yeah. <laughs> Ratings are going to tank, man. Everyone's here. <laughs> they no, one's already here. no one's here for the John Sawyer. They're here for the Andy Richter. You know? Right. Uh, <laughs> but I keep telling him, and he's like, no, they want to see me. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. You guys should do a swimsuit calendar before he leaves. Right? They should. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pancakes in every photo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, so what is your... You do this uh, this podcast, and wrestling's a big topic for you guys. Yes. But what is your connection to wrestling now locally? Because I know that you're not in NYWC right now. Mm -hmm. um, ECPW. They're, EC, they're, they're try, you know, ECPW's trying to get back up and running. I've yeah. actually been in contact with Mr. Caruso, Caruso for the past mm -hmm. couple of weeks. We have, well, I shouldn't say we. He has some locations in mind, but, you know, a couple of things have to be handled first, such as, you know, like building payments and, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. So um, he's trying to come back, but I don't see it happening, you know, anytime soon. With all due respect to Mr. Caruso and the crew down in uh, – we're in New Jersey on it. In New Jersey. But continue. It, it, I mean, it's expensive. Yeah. It's, it's more expensive this year than it was last year. Mm -hmm. by, and, not, and not only that, but, you know, certain guys from the roster are contacting me with these unrealistic ideas like uh, internet pay-per-view and, uh, you know, coming up with our own Wait, thing. you got you to gotta give me. What, is it somebody I dislike that gave this internet pay-per-view idea? It's someone you don't even know, to be quite oh, honest. Oh, okay, good. You know? Never mind. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I know a lot, of, a lot of the kids over there, and some of them are just... Staring at a brick wall, you know, or watching paint dry. There's nothing going on. Yeah. So I could see them going, let, let, let's, let's do a live pay-per-view. It's only going to cost us $1,400. Yeah. Let's do a live pay-per-view. The battery's running low, so say goodbye to your live stream. Muddy, count your days. Mm. Yeah, they're so, you know. It, it costs a lot. you got to do the whole yeah. setup, and then you got to have a good internet connection. Um, and then, you know, here's the thing. If you have 200 people uh, sitting there, and I don't know if the Ronkonkoma Firehouse could do that, uh -huh. 200 people. But if you have 200 people sitting there and you're, you're a small market and uh, the biggest name on the show is like uh, Del Wilkes or, you know, whatever you got, um, you're not going to have 40,000 people buying this thing. So you're never going to clear $1,400. Right. It's when you have international stars. Yeah. Um, guys like Flip Gordon and uh, Feinstein and guys who are doing stuff over there or guys from there that come over here. Like you had like a uh, Jack Gallagher or, uh, oh, man, Tyler Bate, mm -hmm. or somebody like that, some kind of big European star, mm -hmm. then you're going to do something with the eye pay-per-view. I actually pitched an idea one time um, when Sammy Callahan was in NXT and just got released back onto the Indies. He put okay. a thing out, you know, available for bookings, you know, wherever, contact me here, whatever. Yeah. And I pitched to have Sammy Callahan brought in to headline against Reno or, you mm -hmm. know, whoever, you know, top guy, you know, one would want to put against him. And they said no. It's budgetary, know. man. Just budgetary. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, like Bull James. I think he was working for you guys before he went up. He, uh, Smith James. Yeah. 
Um, and then, you know, there's, he, a, there's actually a story about a falling out him and Gino had, which I'm not going to, you know, leak here. <laughs> it, it, it's actually, it was actually mentioned on Cole Cabana's Art of Wrestling podcast. Okay. So if you guys at home want to hear it, look up Bull James on the Art of Wrestling podcast. But continue. You want to know something funny about the Art of Wrestling podcast? Uh, the Night Necro Butcher. Yeah, but he, he talked about Reyes. that on the podcast. He talks about it, yeah. Yeah, but the Masada episode, right? Yeah. yeah, and he refers to, I think he refers to him as a fat Mexican kid. <laughs> so I said to Sixto all the time, like, your legacy in wrestling is your fat Mexican kid who Necro Butcher stomped. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I'm, so I figured, you know, ECPW is running, Bull James gets released, he'll be right there, and I think you guys closed right when he got out. Because that would have been like, uh, would have made sense as a guy you could have brought in to boost things up. Right. Yeah, I don't recall off the top of my head, but uh, yeah, other than that, this would probably have to be my only connection, so to say, to the business, if there really is one. Overloaded, <laughs> you're busy, you're jaded, what is it? Well, I'm working a shoot job and, you know, trying to make money and just... Yeah, those, those cocks won't jerk themselves. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. You learned that the hard way. I know. Someone's got to offer you a mint when you leave the bathroom at Walmart. Yeah, you know, like of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Speaking of bathrooms at Walmart, true story, and this may get gross. Woman comes, woman comes up to me and goes, uh, there's a strange lady uh, smearing stuff on the walls in the women's room. Can you go check it out? I'm like, you want me to walk into the women's room and check this out? Mm-hmm. So just as, just as this was happening, a female associate who I dislike was walking by. I was like, hey, do you want to check something out in the, in the, in the women's room? <laughs> She walks in, and I could hear her scream from literally, like, down the first aisle. Yeah. She comes running out, like, security, someone call AP, someone call AP. Apparently, somebody came in, loaded on PCP, oh. took off all her clothes, and was smearing feces all over the wall on the inside. They That's... had to call police, and the police came in with this giant tarp. <laughs> oh, well, wait, what, what Walmart was this? Walmart. Um, Islandia? Cause... Yeah, let's go sounds with that. Like <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely sounds like a landing. That's that's definitely worse than the day that the woman walked into the store, took a dump on the floor, and walked out. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Walmart. Yeah, there was that. There was the guy who came in dressed like Bozo the Clown. Nice. He, he was just shopping for like squeak toys or something like that in the pet aisle. You sure? You sure it wasn't Frank the Clown? No, he he was a little shorter and more okay. budgier. It could have been. Uh, could have been Russian disguise. He's local. All right, so you guys want a horrible work story. Okay, so I work at a gym. Everyone's got a shoot job. Um, and one of my fellow coworkers was uh, grabbed by a bunch of people, and they said, listen, there's a homeless guy. He's in the bathroom. He's washing himself in the sink, which, all right, not too weird. The weird thing is directly behind the sink, we have showers. So, okay, so my uh, the other coworker goes in there, and he turns the corner, and he sees the guy, and he's splashing water all over the walls, the mirror, everything. And he says to the guy, hey, buddy, you done? You, you done? The guy goes, oh, I'm finishing up. I'm just taking a shower. And they're like, well, you got a shower. He's like, well, I'm done. He, the guy turns around. He walks in the bathroom stall. So the coworker, he kind of just stands there. And he notices that the guy just starts unloading piss all over the floor. <laughs> just he's sit, standing next to the toilet, just like he was standing next to the shower. Mm-hmm. But he's peeing on the floor. So... The kid, he knocks on the door. He goes, hey, buddy, you're pissing on the floor. What are you doing? And the guy goes, no, I'm not. Arr. And he says, come on, buddy. Come on, get out of here. Guy opens the door, and he goes, I didn't pee on the floor. And the guy goes, I saw you. I watched you do it. I'm standing right here. And the guy looks him dead in the eye, and he goes, it's not piss. It's water. And he leans down, and he runs his finger oh, through God. the puddle, and he goes like this, and he licks it. Oh. And the coworker had the correct reaction. He goes, Yep, it's water. And he just walks out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> My God. All right, you want a, a, an offensive joke? Still a bathroom floor, though. All right, I, I've, been, I've been saving <laughs> this. Water or not, that's yeah, got to be disgusting. Yeah, uh, <laughs> what have you been in, saving this for? In a gym. I've been saving this for my WWE uh, tryout. Because they say, <laughs> they say, make us laugh, okay? And I always say, this, this is the worst thing I can think of. Uh, you ever seen Eddie Guerrero involved in a drive-by? So hopefully Triple H isn't watching this right now. <laughs> oh, no, you're safe. <laughs> wow, I have nothing for that. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we're done. No, 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 no. My God. Binky, you got any jokes? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not funny. Oh, you're not well, funny. this Amish guy, he walked into oh, a bar. This Amish guy. <laughs> yeah. 
There's plenty mm. of stuff I heard, uh, you know, from friends and whatnot. What's the one I heard recently? Uh, the leprechaun. What, what's the one I told you about? Uh, the, the leprechaun at the urinal? You didn't tell me that? What? Uh, I've uh, never heard a leprechaun <laughs> at the urinal joke. Brad Garrett walks into a restroom, sees a leprechaun taking a piss. Grabs the leprechaun and goes, now I got you. You have to grant me one wish. I want to be relevant and famous again. The leprechaun goes, before I grant you this wish, you have to let me screw you in the ass. Oh, I've heard this joke. Five minutes later, they're on the floor. The leprechaun screwed him in the ass. So Brad's like, I can't believe I'm letting a leprechaun screw me in the ass. Then Justin Bieber yells out, I can't believe you thought I was a leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a different version of that. Did joke. you get this yeah. from Brad Garrett? What? Did you get this from Brad Garrett? No. Gil- he does comedy now. You know? I know he does comedy, okay. but it wasn't from him. It was from Gilbert Gottfried. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, but what's cool about that joke is you can switch names around. Yeah. Like you could say uh, Thomas Coe walks into a bathroom and get a hose. <laughs> Thomas Coe. Ooh. <laughs> I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> what's your, uh, you guys got a Gilbert Gottfried impression? Not me. I bet you do. <laughs> you probably got a great one. All right, let's you know, I have to work on my fag voice. <laughs> That's not bad. That's that not is, bad. That is pretty good. Yeah. When we did the roast for uh, uh, Vinny and the Guido, I was contemplating uh, going up twice. Yeah. Uh, once as me and then once as Gilbert Godfrey because there were no cameras. Okay. You know, being like, Vinny the Guido is here. <laughs> That's not bad. That's not a bad Gilbert Godfrey. I'll tell you that. I actually just saw him. The barbecue I left, he was at. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not, no lie, he was there. Bullshit. No, he really, I swear to God, yeah. he was just there. And he goes, he comes up to me and he goes, you know what I don't miss? Wrestling. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Five minutes later, he comes up to me. You know what I don't miss? Wrestling. <laughs> Five minutes later, he comes back up to me. Ah, I'm glad I'm not in wrestling. I said, Vinny, you mentioned wrestling a lot for someone who's glad he misses it, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is a half an hour ago. I, yeah. Did you see when they had Gilbert at the Iron Sheik roast? No. Yeah. He goes, Iron Sheik is so old that the only thing he wrestles with nowadays is an enlarged prostate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I have a Gilbert Godfrey impression, but I'm not doing it on live, <laughs> on live TV here. Yeah. You got to pay to see that. Go to JohnnyMalloy.com. No. He's got one <laughs> of the best lines in his stand-up act uh, about Casey Anthony. He said he wants to hire Casey Anthony as a babysitter because she knows how to keep a kid quiet. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go home and watch Problem Child now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that was a good movie. They all were. Yeah. yeah. My favorite uh, Gottfried story, though, if you ever wa- you watch the Fuse Network um, every once in a while. What, what is that? Music? It's like, f- like music, something like that. Oh, I watched it when it was like Julia's Metal stuff and all that crap back in the day. Oh, um, back uh, it was Uranium? Uranium? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was a good show. Um, <laughs> it wasn't a good show. She was just a good-looking woman. Yeah, that's yeah. what made it a good show. <laughs> <laughs> then they gave her, like, uh, Julia lays in bed and says sexy things to people who call in. They're like, my boyfriend doesn't have a penis. And she's like, well, just take a cucumber and jam it. <laughs> it was like, a, but it was on air for, like, three seasons, man. They had a, um, a show on Fuse, uh, ICP Theater with the Insane Clown Posse. Okay. Um, they would sit them in like this movie theater setting and they would watch like mainstream music videos and they would like judge and critique them. Beavis and, and Butthead style. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And over to the side, um, dressed in a movie usher outfit was Greg the Hammer Valentine. He was he would like bring the guests in okay. and he would like kick them out. Um, they had Gilbert Gottfried on one time as a guest and he of course is killing it the, the entire time. And uh, right around the time Greg comes in to kick him out, he looks at him and goes, Grandma! <laughs> you come back from the dead! <laughs> oh, my God. Have you seen uh, Greg recently? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw him at BWF. He worked a tag match. Mm-hmm. Man, when a uh, kid messed up, he just gave this kid this look like, I wish you were dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough effort in me to kill you, but I wish you were dead. <laughs> That's, that, that tends to be his regular face. Right. I was, yeah. just, I was just thinking that, too. Like, when, when he was at your show, the, the one time in the tag match, that yeah. was just his, his look at when he was standing at ringside yeah. waiting for was the Was Andrew Anderson with him? Yeah, Andrew Anderson was with him, yeah. Oh, okay. Those two are always together, it seems. Yeah. 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 And you know Andrew Anderson's watching this right now. Oh, I'm sure he is. Him, Mike Orlando, and Pancakes on, like, a fucking seesaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, what's the, what are those things you swing on yeah, on your on your front porch? The swing. Yeah, they yeah. gotta be something else for <laughs> it's it. It's a porch swing. Porch <laughs> swing. <laughs> that sounds like a joke right there. Pancakes, Andrew Anderson on a porch swing. Did you see uh, when uh, Andrew suplexed me on the floor? <laughs> no, no. Event? How'd that feel? 
I thought everyone saw that at this point. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I made a joke about it. WWE guys that have seen that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Um, Tugboat saw it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, what happened was I wrestled him in Deer Park at yeah. uh, this, like, baseball place. It's right down the road from the Sportatorium. Oh, I, yeah, I heard when you guys switched there. It was too small. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, and um, <laughs> in fact, the reason why we got the place was because Vinny Guido's kid used to do softball practice there. Okay. So he's like, oh, let's have a wrestling show here. And they were the only ones happy about it. We're all like, well, where are we going to change? Because there's no private room. It's yeah, all yeah, one yeah. room. So we had to put this giant tarp up. But I digress. We go to do the match, and um, the finish gets um, messed up. You know, okay. it was supposed to be a... Uh, um, finish? Wrestling's real. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it wrong then. Um, <laughs> he not, he, he, um, we're fighting on the outside. It's a double count out. Um, he ends up not laying me out. He goes in the ring, you know, raise my hand. Oh, it's a double count out. Oh, whatever. I come climbing back up onto the ring apron. He knocks mm -hmm. me down again. What it was supposed to be was him and I brawl to the back. He didn't tell me that he changed his mind. So I'm laying down, you know, like pretending to be dead or whatever, and I lean my head up like this, and I see him leaving, you know, out through the audience to go to his merch table. First thing in my mind is, oh, he wants me to follow him. You know, so I get up and go <laughs> follow him and attack him from behind. Next thing you know, we're fighting in the crowd, and he suplexes me on the floor. Oh, shit. Now, he knew it was a mistake. I knew it was a mistake, so there were no hard feelings afterwards. But the response it got on the Internet once the video got out there, yeah. like literally, like people thought that I was some disrespectful little greenhorn who decided to take well, liberties. He, he trashed you in the video description, too. Well, that, that. that was all, you know. No, I, I know. Yeah. What if, you don't know the, if you don't know what? He put, he put up the video. He goes, this is what happens when a 300-pound, you know, green baby face, you know, decides to attack me on the way to the table, you know. Uh, oh, so the gimmick is. Yeah, he, he, yeah. He, he was gimmicking it, but the people bought it. Right, and exactly. I, I got so, like... Well, at least you're not fat Mexican kid who got stomped by Necro Butcher. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're, like, like enthusiastic greenhorn baby face. Right. But there were people commenting on it, like, uh, you should have broke his neck with a German instead, and I would have put him through the wall, and all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, all for a <laughs> mistaken finish, and... Um, Tugboat saw it and had a field day laugh about it. He shared it, and a couple people he knows shares it. So there's a few uh, legends who saw it. And I, in fact, I joked about it on Facebook the very next day. I was like, gee, I post a match up on my channel. It gets, what, 60 views in three months? Yeah, This yeah, shit yeah, goes really. up. It gets over 1,000 in less than 24 hours. You I'm know like, what? I think I saw you post that, but I didn't know what you were talking about. Yeah, it was that. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I just, yeah, <laughs> it was a funny uh, memory I had. And to this day, we'll still laugh about it. You know, like uh, I'll see him. I'll see him every once in a while, and he'll go. Uh, hey, remember the time you tried to Pearl Harbor me? Yeah, be sure you regret that, huh, kid. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's like the most watched thing you've ever done. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. And here I thought this would be the most watched thing I've ever done, but no. <laughs> uh, we're about to wrap things up a little bit. Um, you guys will be in. Uh, the Bronx for BWF on June 3rd. Yeah, yeah, my return to the Bronx. Yeah, been you, too got long. The, you got the title match with Muddy Waters June 24th in Delaware for Rampage Pro Wrestling. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll be there. I'll just be at the gimmick table. I'm yeah. not going to be. Real <laughs> selling my 8x10s. Yeah, selling his 8x10s. Buy his 8x10. Real quick before we take it home, what's your social medias? Uh, if you want to find me on Twitter, which uh, don't find me on Twitter, uh, JM Beard Villain. Make sure the A comes before the I. That's for all my Dover people who didn't go to school. Um, <laughs> Instagram, same thing, JM Beard Villain. Facebook, same thing. YouTube, Johnny Malloy. Check it out. We got a ton of content. 2017 playlist is stacked. And I am Little Monster Binky on Instagram and on Facebook. And Pornhub? No, <laughs> not Pornhub. Not that you know of. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Guys, thank you for coming. Hey, man, it's always a pleasure. Right. And uh, good luck, man. Yeah. Thank you. Before we uh, say good night to you guys at home, I want to give my friend here uh, one, an opportunity to speak to you guys directly and um, say his farewell. So I'm going to get up from the table and put the spotlight all on Are him. Leaving me alone here? Well, you can talk by yourself, can't no, you? No, 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 no. This is pressure now. Uh, no, no pressure. Come on. It's lots of pressure. Me in front of a camera, that's like the most pressure ever. And not only that, but you can close the show. How about that? <sighs> really? 
such such fake insincerity. <laughs> do it. This is what I'm gonna miss about this guy. The smart ass, you know, comments. That's what everyone oh, misses about me. Where do you get this kind of? Where do you get this kind of comedy? Really? Yeah, it's true. All right, I'm gonna leave. Joe. Special kind of comedy. Floor is all yours. <clears throat> yeah, don't forget your pen. Yeah. It's annoying me. Right. You left your chair swinging. It was annoying me. So this is it. Five months of this show. It's a lot of fun. I loved every moment of it. I really did, John. Um, first, I'd like to just mention something a friend of mine brought up while we were doing the show. Uh, not really about me, but something we should all remember. Today is the one-year anniversary of the death of Harambe. So Harambe! Please, dicks out for Harambe. Dicks out. Um, also want to thank a few people. I want to thank John for giving me the opportunity to be on the show in the first place. Uh, I know we've told the story before that I was, I think, the first person you called about it. And I did not hesitate to say yes. Uh, again, it's been a wonderful five months. And it's an experience I'll remember for the rest of my life. And thankfully, since it's saved on YouTube, I can always tell people, hey, I used to be a celebrity. <laughs> Even if it's, like, below D-list. Yeah. Uh, Z list, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to thank all the people that came on the show and made it so much fun. Uh, Beard villain Johnny Malloy, of course. Pancakes always calling and having a good time. Robbie Rebel last week, we had a great time with him. Uh, and I know a lot of people have been on the show that were kind of apprehensive about being on the show before they came on. And every one of them, when they left, said, "I had a great time. I laughed the whole time, and and I'd love to do it again." So I feel good knowing that I can leave. I can leave this place knowing I had that impact on people. And one thing I want to tell John is that, remember, you're, like you said, a Z-list celebrity, but you're still a celebrity. Try and do some good with that. A um, couple of personal notes I want to thank. I see she's watching. I want to thank Paula for taking my cat. Thank you so much, Paula. Um, I tried finding a home for my cat for three weeks with no response, and then the last couple of days... Uh, finally, people started responding. Paula came through for me at kind of the last minute, so thank you so much for that. And my wonderful, beautiful, loving girlfriend is also watching. I love you, baby. I'll see you in a few days. Tune in next week for the first ever John Sawyer Show by himself. <laughs>